The next episode of The Commercial Break starts now. For those requesting it, uh, Big Will the Champ actually requested it. Yeah. And so I remixed it. Well, that's for you, Big Will the Champ. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of The Commercial Break. I'm Brian Green. This is my good friend and co-host, Kristen Joy Holding. Chrissy, best to you. Best to you, Brian. Best to you out there in the podcast universe. How the hell are you? Thanks for joining us on yet another episode of this little commercial break. The only commercial break you'll ever need. Guaranteed. Fact, news, or fiction in 30 seconds or less. Order your money back. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> sold, sold, sold. Sold to the highest bidder, <laughs> which apparently is less than $4.99, because that's what we could not convince you to spend a month on the commercial break. Or was it $1.99? I, I think it was, it was like $1.99. <laughs> I think we, we're we going to give you the commercial break, commercial free, an extra episode, one you couldn't get anywhere else for $1.99. I mean, you cheapskates couldn't be bothered. Couldn't be bothered. Fuck you. We're going to have 26 commercials by the end of 2020 for our episode. <laughs> We're going to have 40 minutes of content and 50 minutes of commercials. I'm going to put a commercial every minute. I'm going to put a two-minute commercial every minute. Um, and now this. <laughs> it's like the Dr. Phil show. Maybe we could do a combo. Combo commercial. Oh, combo commercial break. <laughs> commercial break and commercial. <laughs> I like the idea. It's like a Dr. Phil episode. <laughs> Every 15 seconds, that guy takes a commercial break. It's unbelievable. True. I've never True. seen so many commercials on a television show, except for maybe like a basketball game. Yeah. Right? Like a, like a you know, March Madness game yes. where they take a commercial break every time the whistle blows. <laughs> right. But Dr. Phil's pretty close. I mean, he's pretty close. That whistle blows every 15 seconds. It's like today on Dr. Phil, my daughter has angina and won't stop making porn videos <laughs> online. Dee, 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 dee. <laughs> Come on down to Chili's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> come on down to Chili's and get your Texas farting a shit burger. We got norovirus two for one. Projectile vomiting, no charge. Chili's, I want my baby back, baby back, baby back. She's been in the shitter for three fucking hours. Da, 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 da. Let me tell you, we went to oh, we went to baby a Chili's. back ribs. Let me tell I you used something. to love baby back ribs. Everybody used to love Chili's. Yeah, everybody did used to love Chili's. Chili's was a universal. For those of you that are too young to remember this, Chili's used to be the place. It was like not the place you would go. You know, not the place, yeah. but like the place. <laughs> it was the casual like date place while I was in high school. In early years, you know, early you know, maybe 20s. families would yeah. go there, and yeah. That's what you do. Friday night, you'd go to Chili's, and guess what? There'd be a packed, fucking wait. Packed. You'd wait an hour to get into a fucking chili so you can have an awesome blossom and shit yourself all the <laughs> way home. I mean, this is like, this is a fact. Anybody who had a Chili's in their town knows this. Yes. And I worked during the heydays oh, of yeah, Chili's. yeah, yeah, And uh, it'd be like a Wednesday night, we'd be on an hour wait. You know, everybody and their families in a very, like, um, I, you know, I didn't grow up in a particularly, we weren't very, we weren't well to do, you know, yeah. lower middle class family. You yeah. Know, we, yeah. It was the middle class place. Yeah. yeah. It was, a, but the upper middle class, it was in an upper middle class neighborhood, which was like just down the road. Yeah. And those people would be driving their, you know, their Beamers and their Hummers uh-huh. over to Chili's. They'd sit at the bar. They'd have a good time. The bar would be packed. Oh, Everyone bar would be laughing would be and packed. joking. Yeah. I'd be, I was a bartender. I was flipping bottles. <laughs> Cocktail style. Blow. Yeah, I was doing all kind of shit, right? It was it was a lovely place to work and a lovely place to go. Yes. And one of the things that was so important to everyone that I worked for at Chili's, all the man and the managers were making buku fucking bucks. At least oh, I yeah. thought so at the time. I think I remember my manager telling me, like the general manager, like he was making 175 grand a year for this store in uh, north of Atlanta. And at that time in the in the late nineties, yeah, that's like four hundred thousand right. dollars now. I mean, inflation. It's with inflation, it's a lot of fucking money. Mm-hmm. So anyway, and the, those general managers aren't married with kids either. Well, he was. He okay. was married with kids, but this guy a, that's a hard life. His name was Jeff, and I never remember. He was like two foot two. This guy, he was like he was two foot nothing, and he ran around. He, he was, was a always powerhouse. Yeah, he was a powerhouse. He always had. He never fucking stopped. He was like a bunny. He'd run here and he'd just cleaning the window and he'd pulling the tickets and telling me to shut up and go, you know you're fired and blah blah blah. He was everywhere, but he was one of like, he was kind of a mentor in the sense that he was an example of really fucking hard, hard work. work. And then yeah. when he was gone, you wouldn't fucking see him. He mm-hmm. wouldn't be calling. He wouldn't be talking to nobody. He came in, he, he did out. his work. He was out. He ran the store highly efficiently. All the managers in tow, underline everybody. Right. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that Jeff demanded 
was cleanliness. Demanded. Oh, you got to have it in a restaurant. In every Chili's that I worked at. Mm-hmm. And I worked at a couple of like, oh, you know, training other people at other stores and stuff. Every fucking Chili's. Cleanliness. If you have time to lean, you got time to clean. You see a piece of trash on the floor, you pick time it up. Time to lean. Climb to take time. Time to lean. Time to clean. That I was like the thing. It. Right? I like it. And so wiping those tables, you know, was extra important. A bucket of sanitizer, a bucket of wash water, a fresh towel. Everything was so important. It mm-hmm. had to be clean. Every... Every one of those fucking tchotchkes that they had all over the goddamn place, you'd have to, you know, dust them every five seconds. Those those pictures. It was like those a chili pictures. cook-off. Yeah, chili cook off Around and, you know, the world. The steer horns and the, you know, <laughs> this and that and the other thing. <laughs> you know, horns. real live picture of a real live event that really life happened in real life at one point, right? It's yes. so stupid. <laughs> and they still have it to this day. Anyway, here's the point. Clean as a fucking whistle. But I made the bad decision. A couple of weeks ago, right after we decided to take our, or right after we took our little, right after we took the break. Mm-hmm. Like, so in the middle of the break, I was going to go out to eat with my mom. The family was. And so I said, hey, listen, let's just go to Chili's. Let's check it out again. It's close to mom's. Yeah. Mom can get in easy and out because she has some mobility issues. Let's just go there. Right. Mm-hmm. And Astrid kind of looked at me and she was like, <laughs> oh. and I said, listen, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> right? you get a burger well done. You know, you shit yourself for a couple of days. Yeah. <laughs> I can stand to lose a few pounds, so you know, <laughs> I get another bout of salmonella. Maybe I'll go. To, <laughs> I lost seventeen pounds yeah, in that bout of salmonella, weight. and I gained twenty-seven. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Anyway, we go there, Chrissy. Yeah. I have never in my life, never, and I've been to. I I was in Mexico City and went to like restaurants on the corner in a cardboard box. You know what I'm talking yes. about? Like real authentic street food with mm-hmm. real authentic la cucarachas hanging out everywhere. Mm-hmm. This was the most fucking disgusting restaurant I have ever been to in my entire life. There was shit everywhere. Everywhere you looked, it was disgusting. The glasses were disgusting. The plates were disgusting. The windowsills were disgusting. Everything was disgusting. Astrid and I were like hands up on our head. We didn't want to touch anything. (laughs) We were grabbing the children's hands and like putting... I didn't want to touch anything in there. Hand sanitizer squirting all over the table. They now have this thing where you like order at the table, like a little screen. That screen had... it looked like, like it. <laughs> remember that f- friend that I used to have that kind of smelled bad and he was a little weird. Yes. If you ever looked at his phone, his phone had like six months worth of extra jizz on it. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> he would just be whacking off and all the lotion and jizz would still be on his screen, but he wouldn't clean it off. Gross. And so you look at that screen on his phone. You wouldn't want to touch it. You were like, ah, da, 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 da. you know, here, call him from my phone. No, 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 no. I don't want to touch that. This, this is what this is what screen looked, looked like. like. You couldn't be bothered. They couldn't be bothered to wipe it down. Ah. Now I'm sure these people are hardworking. It also looked like they had about two waiters for every 45 people right. because it's hard to find work right now. I thought it was disgusting. So now let me tell you what happens. So a couple nights ago, there's my baby screaming. Yeah. Crying. <laughs> hey, Mia. So let me tell you what happens a couple nights ago. I'm here in the studio. She's remembering this She's remembering this experience. This experience <laughs> and I'm remembering it too. I am a little bit of uh, I wouldn't call, I don't know if I'm OCD. Mm-hmm. But I have a nose like a hose, and I can smell things a mile away. If Blue poops in this house somewhere <laughs> on the other side of the house, my house is like Long. 140 feet from one end, 140, 200 feet from one end to the other. If I am in the corner in the bathroom with the door closed and Blue, a piece of poop starts coming out of Blue's <laughs> rear end, you know I it. can smell it right then. I'm like, <laughs> she's sitting somewhere in the house. Get her, get her, get her, get her. <laughs> right? I hate it. I hate it. Yeah. The other night I'm sitting here in the studio. And Astrid comes running. I have my headphones on. Astrid comes running in the door. I need your help. Anytime a parent says that to another parent, yeah, I'm thinking the worst. Yeah, I'm thinking one of the babies, like something really happened bad, mm-hmm. right? Or something happened to one of the dogs or something. So I scramble over there, headset, pulling out all the wires. I run away. <laughs> and what I see is probably one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen in my entire life. Mia was up in the bed, in our bed where she normally lays in between Astrid and I, and so does Matthias in between Astrid and I. And she was up and she was screaming and crying. And there was vomit everywhere. Oh, no. All over our bed. But if as if that wasn't bad enough, I then hear my son in the bathroom and he is crying and screaming. And I can see (laughs) all between the bed and the bathroom, there is a trail trail of vomit everywhere. And I go in there and he is standing in a pile of vomit with vomit all over him. Oh, God. Chrissy, there is nothing in this world. Was this after Chili's? This was days. Well, we don't think it was Chili's. We actually think we think it it was a different place. Okay. But I'm just saying, right? The two are 
<laughs> connected. Because first of all, we'll never go back to that Chili's ever again. Chili's yeah. has fallen way down. Remember I when think I told they you? Were sold. I think like the company, the parent Jeez, company, who sold were they them. Sold so to yeah. Fucking Pollo Loco uh, yeah. out of Breaking Bad. <laughs> I mean, like. <laughs> He, he kept his place pretty clean. Oh yeah, actually. he kept it spotless. <laughs> yeah. But I, I don't know who they sold it to. They yeah. they sold it to like Ace Hardware or something because those people don't know how to fucking r- yeah. run a restaurant. This projectile vomiting was <laughs> intense. Wow! And it went everywhere. We are mm. up in the middle of the night. Mia is doing this every thirty minutes. Luckily, Matthias was one and done. But Mia, that poor little girl, she's just every Aww. every couple of minutes she'd be like. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> like a wind up yeah like a wind up toy. you ever seen like uh the exorcist yes it's just coming out of her mouth and then we that here's what we do they get her out of the bed clean her off put her in the shower she screams and cries more matty comes into the shower because he thinks he got vomit on him but he didn't he's picked up my ocd yes. it's unbelievable this was awful oh. and this went on all fucking oh. night long poor girl and i suspect it came from food mm-hmm. from uncleanliness of food mm-hmm most it of the is. time when you get sick, it is from some form of food poisoning. Yeah. And, you know, I just am never going to go to that Chili's again. I'm never going to go to a Chili's again, mm-hmm. ever in my entire life. So <laughs> I'd like to thank our new sponsor, Chili's. <laughs> get your baby back ribs. Now on sale, June through July, baby back ribs. Comes with free norovirus. No charge for the norovirus. <laughs> Puke bags included. I, I don't yes, even think I, uh, the mighty have fallen. I don't even Chili's, think that yeah. if Chili's paid me to do a, a commercial on this commercial break, I don't think I would do it. I just no. don't. That's how strongly I feel <laughs> about how disgusting this place was. And remember when I said it used to be the place to go? Not the place to go, but the place to go. Yeah, a it's great now, place to go. It's now a place to go. If you know what I'm talking about. And not probably not if you want food. The last yeah. place to go. Yeah, if you want to, <laughs> you know. Shit, Arita, or whatever they're fucking called. <laughs> like, like the Pango, Wango, Maui, Waui, Pango, Dango, Margarita, where they pour seven buckets of sugar and two drops of, you know, manufactured strawberry juice, I, along with some shitty tequila. I think it might be the same company that owns Olive Garden. Oh, and nothing I like had, an Olive Garden. I had a bad Olive Garden experience. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Jeff and I had to go out to Texas for Yee-hee! something. <laughs> And we got in late and we were hungry and we were at the at the hotel and oh. there was an olive garden near there and I thought, you know what? Breadsticks and salad. Unlimited. A glass of wine. That's Why what not? I want. Yeah. Uh, no. You got uh, you got it some bad, bad romaine lettuce. <laughs> it was bad, bad, bad. You got some bad romaine lettuce. It was all. It was bland, bad hard bread <laughs> sticks. Bland. The, the, yeah, it it's was like they don't super give a bland. Shit. And the wine, the red wine. I mean, it was. Oh, oh. God, I think it had been classico. sitting in the bottle for. <laughs> Brian, for send him a bottle of Chianti Classico. <laughs> Yeah. Opened. Open. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because no one drinks there. They can't, you know. We got an Olive Garden at the corner down the street, yeah. and that thing is all for 24 fucking hours a day. That thing is packed people with people. People love it, but I. Yeah, but I just wonder how much toilet flushing is going I on know. after that because at one time my father in law convinced me, you know, he's from Venezuela. Yeah. So Olive Garden is like the best thing in the world. You know, he sees yeah. those commercials online and he thinks this is like, you know, pasta. The commercials primavera. look so delicious. Of course they do. Yeah, well, if, uh, okay. So he convinced, I tell, I keep telling him, no, we're not going to Olive Garden. That is not Italian food. That yes, is right. someone pretending to be Italian food. Yeah. That is what, you know, that's what children eat garlic. pasta with extra butter and garlic. <laughs> it's just yeah. Got garlic. It's just got garlic. It's just garlic. <laughs> and it's gross. And the tomato sauce is not tomato sauce, it's tomato paste that has water in it. It is disgusting. But he convinces me one time. He's mm-hmm. like, Brian, let, come on, go to, the, go to the Olive Garden with me. And so we all go to the fucking Olive Garden and what? What do we get? Uh-huh. We get brown lettuce with, yep. you know, those, remember the, the carrots and cabbage? Shaved. You remember when you were a kid and you had the lunch lady and the young lunch lady used to make the salads and she would put like one piece of lettuce and then a bunch of sliced carrots and cabbage <laughs> on top and put a little honey mustard on there and yep. she'd be like, that's your salad for the day? Mm-hmm. That's what you get at Olive Garden. Only it's worse than that. It's fucking yeah. disgusting. It's gross. And when we went there, it was gross. And my father-in-law even capitulated. He was like, yeah, yeah you're okay. right. Nothing like the commercials. This is not it. Yeah, no, the at commercials Garden, make it look fabulous. At delicious. Olive, at Olive Garden, your family and we hate <laughs> Your family. <laughs> <laughs> I like to thank our new sponsor, Olive Garden. Right. <laughs> we hate you too. We're really, 
reeling it in here with the with the. I hope nobody works there. Yeah, but. by my count, I think uh, in the course of the commercial break, we <laughs> have offended. pissed off about thirteen different sponsors that we may or may not have ever had. <laughs> We're not getting any more, uh, you know, keynote speeches from anybody. No. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't think iHeartRadio is going to be buying our podcast anytime soon. <laughs> but we're open to negotiations in case. Yeah, you're we're, we're, we're open to talks. Yeah. So someone said, hey, would you ever go back and work for Clear Channel? I don't know that it's the same company now. It's been bought and sold a couple of times at this point. Yeah. So I don't know that it's the same company, but I don't think Clear Channel is <laughs> going to want us on board. No. It's not even called Clear Channel anymore. No. It's called iHeart. Yeah. But I don't even think they would want us on board. No. Not if they listened. But that's <laughs> making the assumption they ever listen to any of the podcasts they buy. Like Conan O'Brien needs a friend. Okay. They probably listen to that yeah. one. But do they listen to the fucking commercial break? No, they do not. No. I was trolling on the internet. As you do. As I like to do. Chrissy. <laughs> Ryan. Hey, hey, ah, hey. Ah, hey. What? Yep, yep. What? Yep, yep. I was listening to that episode the other day. What? What? <laughs> that was a real dumbass. Uh, I was trolling on the internet, as I do, and I decided that we should go back and do part two of an episode we did a couple of days ago. Yes. Maybe a couple episodes now, but depending on how I decide, I want to release the episodes. Uh and we got into a video where we were having Frankie B walk us through how we take 10 years off our look, whatever the fuck that means. <laughs> so if I you thought he was saying 10 years off our life, of our life. Yeah, but it wasn't. It was our look. look. Yeah. Whatever that means. Uh, so Frankie B, if you have your luck, or your luck, on <laughs> 10 years off your luck. <laughs> I don't know why you want 10 years off well, your I think luck. if you follow his advice, you might be taking 10 years off your luck. You might be taking 10 <laughs> years off your life, meaning you're not going to get another 10 years. Because Frankie B yeah. is doing a beauty video. I uh, mean, he's got to say he dabbles he in dabbles. a little bit of everything, I it seems I think you're like. supposed to have like a professional license to put Botox <laughs> in people's faces. Isn't there like nightmare stories about, yes. Yeah, yes. about going to... A yes. place with one room and a light and some guy with a and needle. And you can get frozen face. But on here, he promoted frozen Ooh, face. If frozen. you would, if you would like to have frozen face, we can do it. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Just buy this product. Come to my salon. Frankie basically is walking us through three <laughs> uh, highly toxic <laughs> chemicals <laughs> that you can put in your face. In order to make you look 10 years younger. That's what he's trying to say, mm -hmm. but he does never quite finds the right words to say anything. So we're going to say <laughs> well, it for him. Microderm ablation. Yeah, microderm ablation. <laughs> but he found three different chemicals. One, I think we've gotten through uh, Zeman, which is the actual Zeman. name of the product that he's saying. Zeman. Zeman in your face. Zeman in your face. <laughs> Put a number of shots of Zeman on your face <laughs> and it'll relax your muscles. <laughs> uh, now we're on, what are we on? Theraflume or... <laughs> Fl Flumadome or yeah, whatever. Flume. I don't know. What wrong. Yeah. Yeah. But we're on something. So this is part two of the Frankie video that I promised you because I promised people I would actually do the entire video as yes. promised. So go to youtube.com slash the commercial break. If you'd like to follow along on the video, there's Frankie. He's so veiny. <laughs> He's veiny. <laughs> He's like a penis. He's like a life-size penis. He's leathery and weird, and he tilts to one side, and he's got lots of veins. Good yeah. job, Chrissy. I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's pick up where we last left, last left off. Okay. Frankie B. <laughs> Ten years off your luck. By creams and serums? Hell no! The only way to do it is by a dermafiller, okay? Will and he's the first one the that's the, come up with the dermafiller. I'm the first one to ever do dermafiller. <laughs> I made it in my own kitchen, <laughs> and I distributed yeah. worldwide. Yeah. <laughs> Coronavirus, solved it. Monkeypox, solving it. All with my tuna and egg combination and semen. <laughs> Chicken semen, to be correct. I can't produce that much. I'm 70, you know what I'm saying? And the marionette line is giving your skin volume. We will inject it under your eyes over here, plumping out your <laughs> eye sockets and give you... Oh, Frankie! Plump it's, it up. It's me, Beatrice. Yes. I need to plump up my cheeks and my eyeballs, please. I look like a skeleton. Oh, I've got frozen <laughs> face. I'm a skeleton frozen face. You nice, beautiful cheeks. We can even go into the temples because you may look at your the temples. temples. And they may the temples. I don't think you need to go into the temples. I don't think you want to be putting anything near your brain. No. Yeah. 
into the temple. Are you sure this guy has a license to I, do this? I don't Somebody ought to check up. Is. Someone who lives in Illinois ought to check up on this guy. I don't know. And what this does is it's going to give you a nice, beautiful, round, frozen beautiful face. <laughs> Ooh, Frankie. <laughs> Nice, beautiful, brown, frozen face. Frankie, I was <laughs> hanging out with the hipsters yesterday. Those men 20 years younger that I really like, you know, in their late 60s. And then all of a sudden my frozen face started to go away. I was able to move my eyeballs. Would you mind shooting me up with some more semen? <laughs> No cream, no serum, no potion is going to do that. None of that stuff has been approved. None of that (laughs) FDA-approved bullshit. We're going straight to the... Temple. To the online pharmacy. (laughs) We're going right into your temple. With shots of a highly toxic poison. (laughs) To freeze your face and plump it up. You're going to look great. Look at me, I look like a swollen pair of testicles. (laughs) <laughs> your looks by 10 years so i'm gonna give you two looks and warning this may scare the shit out of you but people it is what it is all right look number one. <laughs> warning i'm gonna this may scare the shit out of you lots of people have died in my microderm ablation but studio. it is what it is but it is yeah. what it is what can i say never been charged with manslaughter yet <laughs> you're looking at it here comes look number two Oh. Look number one, here comes two. What is he doing? What is he doing? <laughs> look number one, here comes look number two. I don't see the difference. I don't see the difference. Okay, first of all, he's not holding up a picture. He's yeah. just pulling he's back, pulling back his, his skin, own skin a little bit. but it Like doesn't, a tiny bit Yeah, at but the you jaw. Can't, you don't notice it at all. And then what's look number one? <laughs> he says, look number one, and he does nothing. And then he goes, look number two, and then he pulls back his skin. Maybe he meant to like throw in a picture there and it just didn't happen. <laughs> Uh, it's not right, very so scary. No. Then, what look look better? Well, obviously, <laughs> look number two did. Do this? <laughs> look Cow number two. Bunga, Cowabunga, dude. <laughs> dude. <laughs> Which looks better, my natural face or one that's bald black like this? <laughs> Which looks better, my face inside the car? Going 152 miles per hour in my Jaguar or outside the car going 152 miles per hour in a Jaguar? Of course, number two. Yeah. Who doesn't want a pulled back face? (laughs) Because I just mimicked a facelift, okay? Now, the facelift will instantly take years off of your look, but it's very invasive. It's very expensive. A lot of people are not going to do that. I'm not going to do that, nor will I spend the money on it. But product number three is going to do the same thing at a fraction of the cost. Okay. And you're in Here because we I developed it in Frankie B's <laughs> biological studios, not <laughs> FDA approved. None of these claims have been certified as true. I'm a chemist. Yeah, I'm a chemist. <laughs> Did you see my video on tuna eggs? <laughs> the office in 30 minutes. I'm going to show you what they are. All right. Let's these are see. called monothreads. Now, the side of this might scare you. Oh, my you God. scare a lot of people. Okay, so... This needle at the end of it, it has a thread in there, and this thread has little microscopic barbs on it. And what we do is we'll insert this into your face, okay? Jesus. And oh my God. Two, three, I've and actually four heard areas. of and this. Once you insert and the needle in and you pull I out, don't. the microscopic Eesh. thread stays in your face with I'll the take a facelift. So put me on Oh <laughs> my God. You put barbed wire in your face and then pull it backwards? Yeah. That's incredibly intense. I mean, wow. Chrissy, I'll take what a the facelift. fuck is someone thinking? I'll do a facelift all day long. I know I'll look, I'll be a monster with these big, like, scars on my cheeks and it's like that. But I just think I'm not up for any of this, to nah. be honest with you. I know Rachel, for my 20th birthday, decided to get me Botox. She's like, I made you an appointment at the Botox doctor. I was 29. What, I mean, what were you thinking? But listen, this is not for me. I'm telling you right now, this is very serious as far as I'm concerned. And you should be doing this by a, a doctor. Look at his should bicep. Be doing yeah. It's, well, I mean, when you're 70 and you've been, who knows how that bicep got so big. 
Your skin cannot come down because it catches on the microscopic barbs. And this is going to give you that Jeez. nice pull-up look, okay? And get rid it of the creepy It catches on the microscopic oh barbs. We're going to literally <laughs> run your face across barbed wire outside Frankie B's house of Salon Salon Suites. And I'm going to pull your head backwards and you're going to have a brand new face. Some people are scared by that, but not you. It is what it is. Yeah. Oh, Frankie! Uh, <laughs> you, you forgot me. I'm up here on the barbed wire, dear. <laughs> Don't worry, Beatrice. You need a couple more hours, and then we're going to yank your old head right off that barbed wire. You're going to have 10 years off your look. Okay, Frankie, I trust you. <laughs> Frankie! That's still on the barbed wire. <laughs> Filler in your face like I talked about in the last segment. But sometimes you need more because sometimes you just can't get rid of the creepy skin because you've gone sometimes too far. Sometimes you need to rip it through <laughs> barbed wire. Jesus. So we're going to take barbed wire, <laughs> stick it inside your face With and then needle. rip it out. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So this is a great alternative to a facelift. I don't like him waving that needle around. Yeah, yeah seriously. And it's going to take 10 years off your look. Let me show if you If you survive. Here. Oh, my God. If you, yeah. <laughs> no wonder he's upstairs. No wonder his office is one 10 by 10 box upstairs in a townhouse with no one else around because right. the blood curdling screams that come out of there. He's not a doctor. He shouldn't be pulling barbed wire in people's face. <sighs> this one here, these are a little bit smaller, okay? A little bit less scary. Now, what these are used for, now, these It'll are take five years. Bills, okay? These threads, now, you'll insert into the, the sockets below your eyes up over here and pretty much anywhere in the cheek. And once you put these threads in there, it causes an injury. And then what happens <laughs> is you build <laughs> I'm sold. <laughs> Where do I sign up? <laughs> oh my God, Frankie! What are you I talking about? The injury. This and... causes a major injury inside of your face. We're going into your temples. <laughs> that bruising is going to make you look super sexy. <laughs> Takes ten years off your look. It's hard to know how old you are when your face is all fucked up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! When it looks like you just ran through a windshield at sixty miles per hour, no, no one's gonna know. No one can tell no one's what gonna age care you are. How old you are? <laughs> oh my God! That's too funny. Okay, hold on. Here we go. Due to the injury, thus plumping up the spot. So we'll put maybe two or three of these into this area of the eyes. You can add. Jeez, them now that he's so cheeks, close okay? to the camera, I think and, I can see where he's done this to himself. Yeah, you can see the scars the underneath his eyes. I think Frankie might be a victim of his own success. It's like a dealer that's smoking his own crack. You know what I'm saying? You think he does this to him? Probably does this to himself. Uh, yeah, he's had to. Yeah. Ugh. Also going to give you volume and take 10 years off your look instantly, which no cream or no serum is going to do. We just went over three products and services that are going to instantly take 10 years off your look. But I'm going to throw on another one. Whoa. Oh, wait, there's more. There's more? Oh, Frankie. <laughs> it's me, Frozen Face. You never told me about more. I did the barbed wire. I did the semen all over my face. I had the Theraflu or whatever it was. Fillers. You injected Theraflu into my eyeballs. What's next, Frankie? It's very, very important because you could be doing, you know, uh, stuff that makes you beautiful and, and handsome from the inside out. And then uh, if you're not doing anything that helps from the outside in, you're, You're fucked. Yourself, okay? <laughs> That's why I'm ready to introduce Frankie B's barbed wire <laughs> abrasion. Ablation. Ablation. We're going to take this <laughs> handful of barbed wire and scrape it all over your body. And by the time all those scars heal, you're going to have nice, smooth skin. <laughs> All harmony, okay? When you when you do proper skincare with serums and lotions along with the facial procedures that I just told you about, that's called harmony. Together, you're going to make a powerful ebony and ivory. <laughs> Together, we're making some harmony. <laughs> uh, creams and jizz and barbed wire. <laughs> 
<laughs> Together we'll set your face on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Youthful impact on your look. But if you choose to do one without the other, something's going to be missing. So here's tip You're not gonna... number four. Okay, and it's called Retina A. Now, what Retina A will do? I think it's is, retinol. This is gonna peel, it, you know, Retina A <laughs> is that Retina A and B is actually something they used to use back when I was a kid for acne for like yeah. bad bad acne right. right I had it and so that I had retin A and retin B right mm-hmm. and so what it is is basically a chemical peel it burns it. yeah it burns yeah. the shit out of your skin it dries your skin out and yeah. it burns it and you look like a fucking fire engine after you <laughs> use the night after you use it and I had to use this for like a year I was using mm-hmm. this stuff and I just look at any picture you look at back then I was a fucking fire engine <laughs> this stuff is highly actually if you remember we had a skincare company yeah. That gave us some like Oh, that's right. Yeah. Go. <laughs> Go. And it burned the shit it does. out of my skin. Yeah. It burned the shit out of my skin. Mm-hmm. My wife was like, you got to stop taking that because I was putting it under my eyes where they told me to put it. And it literally looked like I had two red raccoon circles under my eyes <laughs> yeah. and my skin was peeling. And she's like, you got to stop that. Whatever that shit is, not good for you. <laughs> Two and three layers of skin off your face. And, and what that does is it oh gets my rid God. of imperfection. It gets rid of small blemishes. Are you it gets rid of skin. <laughs> Wait, if you're using this and doing the threading thing, aren't you going to burn to the thread? <laughs> we'll take you down. Yeah, I mean, thread. like... <laughs> this is all just. And then what about the zeman on top of it? Well, if you put the zeman on top of it, then you just it's a. What com- was the zeman for? Harmony. It's called <laughs> harmony. <laughs> the doctors will take care of it in the ICU. It's called <laughs> harmony. <laughs> <laughs> uh, freckling, super fine wrinkles. It'll somewhat help. Somewhat, somewhat. Yes. If I'm going through all this, yeah. it glow like you've never had before. It's super, super powerful. And then you need to follow up with a great skincare routine. Now we're talking about your serums and your creams, your lotions, your potions. It all starts with a SPF, okay? Ooh, oh, that SPF, would burn. Jesus. God. Choose what you want. This also has... Basically, we take <laughs> some gasoline. We throw it all over you. We set you on fire. Then we put some petroleum jelly all over your face. After the petroleum yeah. jelly, what we like to do is get in there with a little hydrochloric acid. That's the next level. Then we take your face, we run it all over some barbed wire... <laughs> then I, I hook you up to the back of my I, the Jaguar, and I run you across the pavement a couple times. And then I roll over you with one of those hot steamers, you know, the kind they use for asphalt. <laughs> and then, then I, I put some shingles wash. on top of your head, and I stick you out in the hot sun for three to <laughs> four put weeks. Put some sun, sunscreen on. Make there. sure you get sunscreen. That's uh, that's the only thing I'm asking. <laughs> Hydration in it. Hydration is very, very important to the skin because if your skin is not hydrated, um, you're going to look weathered. You're going to look cracky. You're not going to have that youthful, glowing appearance. And guys, any guys out there watching, don't be afraid of the words. Anybody out there watching? Is anybody out there watching? (laughs) It's all six people have viewed this video. (laughs) Nothing wrong with a man that has good looking skin, okay? And then follow it up with your hydration, creams, lotions, eye creams, and I put this on in the mornings and the night. But let me give you a disclaimer, okay? I'm not saying I got beautiful skin, okay? I didn't start skincare till I was 54 years old, so I've only been doing this for four years. Oh, Ah, there we go. There we got it. 58. 58, but this was three years ago when okay. he made this video, oh. so he's 61 or two. <laughs> yeah. So now we know at least what age he's telling people he is, is <laughs> right. 62. I suspect it's more like 65 or 66, Yeah, but uh, he's right. His skin does not look particularly good because he's always out. <laughs> and just, the sun. Just as this video was made three years ago and just three months ago, he was like, he was bright fucking red and leathery out in the sun. In this, Mexico yeah. doing his travel yeah, review. This, this is my, I'm looking with into my future. the potted plants. <laughs> I'm looking into my future with the potted plants. Check this out. That's right. So yes, I was out in the sun. I'm just trying to teach you what I Oh, so this was three years ago then he's discovered the, none of this worked. So <laughs> yeah, he's like, fuck it. I'm going to Mexico. <laughs>
I haven't seen a follow up video to this Botox. Let's just put it that way. You probably got shut down. I know. My God. All the wrong things. So I guess I'm going to wrap this video up. If you found it useful, helpful, information. I'm sure the prosecutor found it useful. <laughs> I mean, let's be, let's be honest about it. I don't think Frankie should be doing this at all. No. I, you know, if you're, I don't even, I don't need to tell anybody. If you want to, listen, we have friends that do this all the time. Yes. I have a friend who. I think there's a right way and a wrong yeah. way. First I, of all, go to an actual doctor. I have a friend who had had been doing Botox since it came out. Now, she's probably in her mid-50s. Now, mm-hmm. I say a friend. It's a mother of a friend that I have, and I consider her a friend. But she had, yeah. she's had she been doing Botox since it was available to plastic surgeons, which is a lot longer than we've been talking about it. Oh, yeah. So it's probably probably 30 years at probably, this point. So she's been doing it since her, thir- you know, her early 30s. And she's been doing Botox, and she looks great. And she never has frozen yeah. face. It never looks bad. But she also has a plastic surgeon that does exactly. it for her. It's not That's like one exactly. of these Botox parties where, you no. know, your aunt's uncle's best friend You're going to the town to home Mexico. upstairs yeah. in a salon suite that, seems, that also cuts hair. That seems so dangerous to me. Yeah. <laughs> also does scissors. stupid YouTube it videos. Is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On how to burn your face <laughs> off. I mean, God damn. <laughs> That's a hell of a routine. He's trying to take 10 years off by putting everything on his face and then hoping that something sticks. It's right. unbelievable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, there we did it. We did it. All right, part we did it. We two. finished part two. Whee! Short episode, but you know what? Some are long, some are short. That's the way it goes. Yep. Uh, okay. I wanted to tell you that Chrissy and I have a lot of great stuff coming up. We've got the summer games. We've got the summer games. Yeah. We're coming up on episode number 200, where Chrissy and I are going to review some of our own terrible episodes, (laughs) some of our own terrible YouTube videos. So that should be a lot of fun. We're going to do a true crime series, a parody (laughs) true crime series. We'll get to that later on this summer. I'm excited. Maybe even in the early fall. I'm I'm in the middle of writing it right now. (laughs) So wait. So you just wait, Chrissy. You're going to love this. Uh, we want to thank all the wonderful people who I are leaving. I think it should be like a choose your own adventure. You know, where maybe there, we have something some that we can have. Okay, there is some yeah, people vote on which page to turn to. I'm actually going to have people come call us, right? Okay. And then there's a couple other things that we're going to do. We're going to play a little chat roulette, which uh, I think yeah. is fun. Uh, lots and lots of other stuff. So I just wanted to share with you that we're halfway through season three and it's only going to get better from here. I want to thank everybody who's supporting the show, leaving awesome comments and reviews. We love the reviews. Uh, We love them. We love all you smart-ass motherfuckers out there (laughs) putting up those reviews. Keep them coming. And remember, yeah, you can, even if you left a review, if you want to change it and like make another funny review a couple months later, you can actually just go in and change your review. You can't leave two at the same time, but you can change your review. Yeah. So if you feel like you want to update your old funny review so it gets <laughs> new attention, yes. feel free to do that. I want to thank Luke and Will and Tina and Marianne <clears throat> and, and Reagan. And in answer to the one of the reviews that we got that was a deep thought yeah. about the alien and the podcast universe... I mean, the way that I see it, it's it's the entire universe could be aliens, could be humans, dogs, baby birds. You never that know. Brian grew snakes. on his snakes. <laughs> that I grew on my front door. <laughs> yeah. That you hooked up podcast yeah. to. Go read the Apple reviews. You'll see what we're talking about. Someone had a good point. They said we make the alien noise at the beginning, and then we say, "Best to you out there in the podcast, podcast universe, universe are the two connected, possibly." Yeah. Fact, news, and fiction in thirty seconds or less. We don't care who's listening. Just listen. I don't give a shit. Okay. <laughs> tcbpodcast.com audio video it's all right there 661-237-8296 best to yo comments questions content ideas send them right there okay that's all i can do today christy yep, i think so i love you i love you best to you best to you and best to you out there in the podcast first until next time we always say we do say and we must say mm-hmm. bye, bye.